Hello everyone, this is Gonzalo and today I'm going to show you how to use UI Navigation version 3.0. Keep in mind that this tutorial is for new UI Navigation users who have not used the previous versions of UI Navigation. If you already used UI Navigation 2.0, you can click the link in the description to go to the tutorial specifically for previous users. The first thing that you should know before you use UI Navigation 3.0 is if you have used 2.0, you should remove it from your project or uninstall it on your usable engine version. Another thing is that if you want to access the plugins documentation, you can go to the plugins content folder and inside the docs folder, you will find the UI Nav docs widget blueprint. And in here, you will find the documentation for all of the plugin. So after you have enabled the plugin and installed it or added it to your project, you should go to project settings and inside the engine category, look for the user interface subcategory and make sure that the render focus rule is set to never. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new UI nav component. So I'm going to go to my blueprints folder and create a new widget blueprint. I'm going to call it W my component and I'm going to open it up. And I'm actually going to now reparent it to the UI nav component class. So what is a UI nav component? A UI nav component is supposed to be an individual navigation element, like a button or an option. And it must have a button, which must be called nav button. And it can have optionally a text element. And if it does, it should be called nav text so that the plugin can use it and change it I'm going to change the color to black for the text and I'm going to increase the font a little bit. Keep in mind that all the navigation elements in your widget, if you want them to be navigated by the player with the keyboard and the gamepad and the mouse, they should always be UINF components. The only situation where they can be normal buttons that are not UINF components is if you only want them to be used by the mouse and not by the keyboard or the gamepad. So now that we created our individual UINF component, let's create a widget to populate with our UINF components. I'm going to call it my widget. And this widget is going to be reparented to UINF widget. UINF widget is the widget class that the plugin uses and all of the root widgets in your project have to be UI nav widgets. So if you have a widget with a sub widget and that sub widget has navigation elements, that sub widget doesn't need to be a UI nav widget, but the outermost widget needs to be a UI nav widget. So by the way, pro tip, if you go to your created component and you select the most uh, upper element in the hierarchy you can change the category to common and if you do your new button will show up here in the common tab in the palette and you can easily drag it into your widget so I'm going to first drag a canvas panel and then I'm gonna drag a vertical box anchor it to the center of the screen and I'm going to add three UINF components okay also keep in mind that if your widget doesn't have any buttons or UINF components that you want the player to be able to navigate it doesn't need to be a UINF widget but it can also be a UINF widget even if it doesn't have any buttons to be navigated yet. Okay, now I'm just going to change the text of each of these buttons. So I'm going to change this one to option one, then option two, 
and option 3. Now let's create our player controller which will add the widget to the screen. So I'm going to create a new blueprint class for player controller. I'm going to call it BP my player controller. And in order for your player controller to be set up to use the plugin, you need to do one of two things. Uh, you need to either reparent it to UINF controller or you can individually add the UINAF PC component and implement the UINAF PC receiver interface. Keep in mind that you need to both add the component and the interface if you're not reparenting your player controller. Now I'm just going to make sure that the player controller is being used by my current game mode change this to BP my player controller and now I'm going to actually add the logic for adding the widget to the screen so I'm going to use begin play to create widget and I'm going to add or create my widget I'm gonna pass self as the owning player and I'm going to add it to the screen. Now there are two events that are really important for your player controller when it's using the plugin, which are the on root widget added and the on root widget removed. These events will be called when the first widget is added to the screen and when the last widget is removed from the screen. So when there is no widget on the screen and you add one, this event will be called. And when there was a widget on the screen and there is no longer a widget on the screen anymore, this event will be called. And this can be useful to change the mouse cursor's visibility and the input modes, etc. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do set mouse set show mouse cursor to true when the root widget is added, and I'm going to set it to false when it is removed. And I'm also going to change the input mode to game and UI. And then to game only. And now I can finally play. And as you can see, the widget is added to the screen. I can navigate the buttons with the mouse. I'm now going to use the keyboard to navigate it. And if I connect the gamepad, I can also navigate it using the gamepad. 